Hello everyone. I hope this is working. I'm trying again with technology. Like, you know, why can't I uh, just leave well enough alone? Please let me know if you can see me and if you can hear me. Grandmother clock in the background saying it's time to talk keto. Um, I'm not mic'd today, so I'm using a different device. I tried to upgrade my equipment. We'll find out whether it was an upgrade or a backslide. So if you are out there, please let me know that you can hear me and see me. A little thumbs up. My name is Casey Durango, Go Keto with Casey. And I like to talk about how I've lost 97.4 pounds. I'll be so glad when I can say 97.5 pounds since starting the ketogenic diet and how you might be able to, thank you, Keto Cuckoo, how you might be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life as well. That's what happened to me. I regained control of my life. Don't feedback. We've got some feedback going. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, you can see in here. That's awesome. Thank you. Today I'm going to talk about the couple of things. My and keep in mind these are only my opinions. I'm not a medical provider nor licensed counselor or anything. I'm a well-educated, highly motivated layperson and a former fatty who felt miserable inside her own head and body. My observations and my experience and questions that I get. Um, for instance, when is it, is it ever too late to start? And you know, that's kind of a theme of like the Keto After 40 with Casey Facebook group. Um, for those of you who remember, it's, you don't have to be older than 40 years old to join or to get something out of it. But the, the quote that, um, that I have on my note cards and things that relate to Go Keto with Casey is a quote from George Eliot, who FYI was a, a woman. George Eliot was her pen name. And it's, I'm not looking at it right now, but it's something to the effect of it's, it's never too late to become who you could have been. And I believe that sincerely. There are people in the Facebook group, in the Patreon group, people I've met, I've heard from, received emails from, who are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. I think the 80s is the, the most advanced age I've actually heard from someone. And they were benefiting. But when people are losing weight and getting off of medications in their 70s, when a lot of us have been advised, well, just, you know, you're going to be shuffling off the buffalo here pretty soon, so just ride out your older days. I don't intend to ride out my older days. I intend to live them and do things that I didn't think I ever could do or forgot that I ever wanted to do or whatever. Anywho. So it's never too late. I'm, I'm 60, okay? I'm 60 years old. I started this January 14, 2014. I was 55. Postmenopausal, I believe. I haven't had a uterus since 1990. But I'm pretty sure I was postmenopausal or near postmenopausal. So all the things, and I'm a female, so all the things that we've been told if you haven't lost weight by then, you probably won't. And I was very heavy, and I've been really heavy for about 30 years. So I started, and I just didn't want to take insulin for diabetes. That's how I started. The ketogenic diet, I always want to say, that's 20 grams of carbohydrate or fewer a day. Eat fatty sources of delicious meats, poultry, and seafood, and fish. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. That's, that's pretty much it. If you're going to eat some veggies, there are maximum levels, about a cup of non-starchy vegetables a day, about two cups of leafy greens a day, max, not minimum. That's it. And I lost weight, and I never did have to take insulin for diabetes. Last annual, my blood glucose was 66. So I'm good. So it's never too late. And it's never too complicated because it's just food. But here's the other thing, and I want to talk particularly to those who may think, well, I've got decades before I have to worry about that. It's never too early. So 
So if you are, know of, or love someone in their teens, 20s, 30s, who really, and if you are struggling or know someone who's struggling with, can be weight, it can be, you know, negative self-image that comes if, if we are overweight, but also, you know, these medical issues that can be addressed with a, a well-formulated ketogenic diet don't happen overnight. I wasn't on the verge of needing to take insulin for diabetes at 55 because what I started doing at age 54 and a half. This, as, uh, as it is said, type 2 diabetes is end-stage insulin resistance. And that is all brought on because our body's reaction to glucose in our system, which gets there from the carbohydrates we consume. So think of that. It's end-stage. It takes, it takes years to get to that point. So you might be bebopping along in college and thinking, I've got this. You know, I'm not about to be the one who says, no, I'm not going to Taco Bell for a midnight run. If you can tolerate it and you're healthy and you feel good about yourself and you're in good shape and you're, you're ins excuse me, insulin sensitive, have at it. But keep in mind, you know, just like some folks think, you know, when, when you're 21 and you're smoking the ciggy and you think it looks very cool and dashing, and you know what I'm going to say, you might be able to get away with the cigarette smoking for a while. But you know, emphysema, you don't get it when it's, when it's tobacco related. You don't get it because what you did last week get it after 20, 30, 40 years of smoking in FYI. A cigarette hanging out of the corner of somebody's mouth doesn't look that cool when your lips are all shriveled up. But that's, uh, I digress. So type 2 diabetes takes decades often to show up. The thing is, our population, that starting point for it is getting younger and younger. It used to be known as a disease of middle age. Like seven-year-olds have it. But it's never too early. And there's no downside to it. You get to eat wonderful, delicious foods that fill you up and nourish you and satisfy you. And frankly, some of the foods you get to eat might make your Taco Bell eating friends jealous. When you're eating chicken thighs with the skin and you're dipping it in blue cheese dressing. Yummy, yummy, yummy. When you're enjoying sour cream, a dollop of sour cream along with your cheese omelet and some breakfast links, you know, it's delicious. It's fantastic. It seems too good to be true. So honestly and true, I believe that it is never too early and never too late to do the right thing. And for me, and for many other people, the right thing is a well-formulated ketogenic diet. If you are a young person, keep in mind that what you do now truly does impact your life. We know this, you know this. Intellectually, you know this. And some of you if you're hearing this, maybe listening because you're interested and or curious about, about the diet, you may know people. You may have a grandmother, an aunt, uh, the father of a good friend who has lost a foot or both feet to type 2 diabetes or has congestive, congestive heart failure or any number of metabolic conditions. And so often it's just because of the food. It's not because of the fat that came along with the ribeye that caused it. It was the biscuits and the bread and the pasta. 
in the chips. All the beige food, essentially. So just know, if you, if you can kind of get out of that frame of mind that most of us went through as young people. I was in my 20s once, a long time ago. I was in my 30s and my 40s. And I remember what it's like to feel you have a million years ahead of you and that you're invincible and that you're strong as an ox. And you may be, and I hope you are. And that's a wonderful feeling. But just know, if you want to stay strong as an ox and be invincible, you need to take care of yourself. And it sounds simplistic, but a really great way to do it, and there's no downside to it, is keep your carbohydrate intake 20 grams or fewer a day. If you're younger, you might be able to tolerate more. You probably can, as a matter of fact. Keep your carbohydrate level low. Let's put it that way. Ideally to a point where your liver is not producing glucose for fuel and you start burning ketones for fuel. It's never too early. Okay? So, um, moving on. I'm going to try something that I've never... Hey, Kimmy! Hey, Kimmy, darling Kim from Germany. Hello from Ireland. I'm always curious where people are. So I say thank you. It's a Saturday morning, but it's Saturday evening or afternoon where you are. Bear with me. I'm going to try something I've never done before. Let me know if it works. If I break it, I'll see you next Saturday. I'm going to try to show some before photos of myself during this live stream. Okay, here we go. Oh dear. Let's see if it works. Let me know if you can see the before photos. And FYI, can you tell a difference in the video quality, the, the image quality from previous? I don't think it's working. Oh, maybe it is working. Okay, so that is a before of me. Ooh, that's a, that's a, um, mm, sad. That's sad. That is me trying to do triathlons. I'm going to let this go through a couple more times because, frankly, this is me. I was at a triathlon. I don't know. And, you know, in some of the photos, I'm laughing and joshing, you know, I'm so, but that's the way I really felt. That one where I'm sadly looking at the water. That was, that's not a happy person at all. And that I was not very happy either. Um, so I'm going to stop this. I, I'm going to guess people can see it. But keep in mind, I have to touch something else here. Okay, back again. So let me know if that was interesting. Um, I want to remind you, well, not remind you, I want to promise you what happened with me. I couldn't have looked at those photographs before. Uh, everyone I knew, family, were on high alert to please don't take any photos of me. If you do have photos of me, please make sure I don't see them. And I'm not joking when I say when I would see some photographs of myself, I would spiral down into a horrible depression. The photos from that I have shown you, friends have sent me after I lost some weight, after I lost uh, substantial weight. They said, particularly my friend Tracy, who was in uh, standing next to me in one of the triathlon photos. She's wearing the pink. She sent it. She says, I just want to let you see how far you've come. So if you're someone who is mortified by your appearance um, and can't stand the idea of seeing your own image, I was there. And I am not exaggerating. I'm talking depression after I saw one set of photographs by accident, I seriously could barely leave my sofa. It was bad. It was a very bad, dark, 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 dark moment. And, you know, one can say, well, that's shallow. You shouldn't be so concerned about your appearance. Or the ever-popular, but you're beautiful then and you're beautiful now. Thank you. 
We all say that to ourselves and we want to believe it. I wasn't beautiful and I didn't feel beautiful and I wasn't happy. In my head, my life has always been great. Inside my internal universe, things were not good. I now, even though it's still a little jarring for me to see present images of myself, I now look at those photographs and I truly don't recognize that person. I can't identify. I don't, I remember how I felt. I don't remember who I was, if that makes sense. And I don't know how I hauled my body around a triathlon course. Jeez, that was ridiculous. Well, I can tell you, I participated in four triathlons that summer, and that was 2009, and I finished each one. But after they'd already posted the results and the vendors were packing up to leave. Okay, looking to questions. So, thank you. And, and let me ask you, did that, that experience of, of having the slideshow, is that okay? Because I might try to do some more things like that. Share some screens and things. You do gain a smart plain smile on keto. Deanna, ramen girl, she doesn't give her weight personal preference. She will say how much she's lost, but won't mention actual weight. Correct. Um, okay, so someone asks, so why is keto not supposed to be good for thyroid issues? And what am I drinking? And what if you don't follow exactly? Would it cause any harm? Okay, thank you for the questions. I have my, my trusty assistant is off camera, passing me notes. FYI, that's my lovely name. Um, because the questions go by quickly for me. I don't know that keto is not supposed to be good for thyroid. Here's what I've heard many times from professionals, world experts on the topic. Hypothyroid, hyperthyroid, no thyroid, no gallbladder, no problem. There's no, and there are people, there's a patron. I don't know if she's here today. By the way, thank you to patrons who make all this possible. Um, she is postmenopausal, no thyroid and Hashimoto's disease. She's lost, I think, 60 pounds. What am I drinking? I am drinking, a, this was a full glass of ice with some diet tonic water, a splash of diet cranberry, and a wedge of lime. It's really crisp and refreshing. And my throat gets really dry when I'm talking so much. Um, and so someone asked, what if you don't do it exactly? Will it do any harm? Well, it depends on how out of, off course you want to be. A ketogenic diet is a low carbohydrate diet, moderate protein, which is kind of self-regulating. I have no idea how many grams of protein or fat I eat a day. I know that I consume far fewer than 20 grams of carbohydrate because um, I just do, because I most of the carbs one will consume on this diet will come from vegetables. And I haven't had a vegetable in two or three days. Anywho, so it's moderate protein, and the rest simply ends up being the fat that comes with the protein. Um, but if you're going to eat... A, a, if you're going to eat a lot of fat and carbs, just go have a donut. Keep in mind that the carbohydrate, no matter what form it starts out as in your hand, by the time it leaves your liver, it's simple sugar. So vegetables, sweet potatoes, beets, bran muffins, brown rice, quinoa, lentils, Snickers bars, orange juice, it's all simple sugar. If you're going to be consuming sugar and you're going to be consuming fat, that is essentially that is essentially fried dough. No, that's not going to do you any good. But find the find what works for you. As I said, depending on your age, your gender, your body composition, your level of insulin resistance. You can possibly eat more carbs than I can 
in order to remain in ketosis. Ketosis just means you're burning fat for fuel. You're not burning sugar for fuel. Find that level that works for you. Keep in mind, it's very likely going to change over time. As you get older, your physical makeup changes, hormones, etc. So you find that. Do what works for you. There are many paths to the same destination. And the ketogenic diet, while not the only way to get there, happens to be effective for so many of us, particularly those who, of us who have struggled. Because, for one thing, your hunger goes away. That summer of the triathlon, trained for and participated in four sprint-level triathlons, I worked hard at it. So over the course of about those six months, between the training and the triathlons, I lost some a grand total of 11 pounds. I was still sore all the time, and I was hungry all the time. This will pretty much work for anyone. The 20 grams a day is pretty much baseline, will probably work for just about anyone. And my, my, my honey is... So keto is said to be stressful on the body if you have adrenal and thyroid issues. I'm going to guess that there's a particular online doctor that says that. No. Because it's possible that certain people want there to be thyroid and adrenal issues with this so that they can then sell you a supplement or a kit to address it. But believe Believe, um, believe who and what you like. But if anyone is trying to sell you a supplement or a kit or a powder or a pill, please be wary because none are required. You need to purchase exactly zero things to be 100% successful. And it's food. It's actually what you don't purchase that makes the difference. You don't purchase the tortilla chips. And the, and the Pringles and the bread and the pasta and the rice. You don't purchase the Twinkies and the cookies and the sugar sodas. You don't purchase the fruit juice and the fruit. So, I'm not a medical doctor, but I can tell you I've met with, talked with, moderated with, listened to, read a lot about those people who are actually implementing the ketogenic diet in their medical practices, not online. And I wouldn't worry about the adrenal or the thyroid issues. As a matter of fact, a world expert on it, when asked about adrenal issue, said that there are people trying to treat an, a condition that does not exact, exist in the medical literature. I'll leave it at that. Um, what about the ketones you drink? Thank you, Kim, for asking that question. You do what you want to do, but why am I going to drink ketones? If I'm looking to burn body fat, unless I'm at 3% body fat, spoiler alert, I'm not at 3% body fat. I want to burn my body fat. Drinking exogenous ketones, many times these are also associated with multi-level marketing companies. There is some research going on and some indication that exogenous ketones and ketone esters may be beneficial for the treatment of neurological disorders. Okay? There's therapeutic ketosis that's treating, treating neurological disorders, not metabolic disorders. Okay, so neurologic Alzheimer's, um, dementia, um, Parkinson's, and the research is ongoing. Nutritional ketosis is when you're burning fat for fuel. Well, if I want to burn body fat for fuel, if I drink all the fuel by mouth that my body needs for its energy requirements, it's not going to turn to my body. So I'm not in that. And okay, thank you, Jill. Had my gallbladder out years ago. Do keto just fine. Um, honestly and true. Now, I'm gonna, I've gotten some flack for this because I, I, I don't think I made myself clear. 
You don't have to buy anything to be successful with this. I will sell you a cup that says Go Keto with Casey or a journal, blank journal, that you can write that says Go Keto with Casey on it. Those are fun swag items. You can see them at my blog. But you don't need to be drinking anything out of a cup that says Go Keto with Casey to be successful. So when I'm talking about selling things, please be careful. Spend your money as you wish. Sometimes people just like the commerce of the whole thing. But then I will hear from people, I'm doing everything right. I'm drinking the MCT oil in my coffee. I've been taking the protein shakes. I'm getting in X number of calories a day and I'm not losing weight. I think your answer just lies within your question. Um, okay, um, Aparupa Das Gupta. Have you experienced hair fall in keto? I actually have done, oh, that was for patrons. I just talked about this, about shedding hair and skin um, for patrons, but I think I've done a video on YouTube about it before. Anytime you, well, not anytime, you can when you change any dietary protocol or have any shock to your system or any trauma, emotional or physical, your hair can shed more than usual. But also, we shed hair in zones all the time. We're always shedding hair. Sometimes the zones kind of overlap each other, you know, like, you know, the eclipse of the sun and everything lines up and it seems like you're shedding more. But this is a very nutritious way of eating, so I wouldn't worry about it. Um, do I use coconut oil for cooking? Yes, coconut oil for sauteing, fine. It's, it's pounding back co coconut oil in coffee or by the spoonful for the sake of coconut oil, we don't do that. But, and we usually we use reserved bacon fat for cooking, but there are some foods that are lighter, like if we're doing shrimp or scallops or something a little bit more delicate, and the coconut oil is delightful, but it's just, you know, it's just a little bit. We don't drink it. Um, I do, uh, let me see, I'm gonna go over a couple of things. The Adapt Your Life event, which I think is in three weeks from today, yes, is sold out, apparently. This will be in Roxborough, North Carolina. Um, the speakers are um, Amy Berger, Wickham Simons, Dr. Wickham Simons, Christy Honeycutt Sullivan, Dr. Eric Westman, and last but not least, me. Um, but that is sold out. They have some um, waiting list tickets. And then the weekend after that is the Portland Roadshow event in Portland, Oregon. The 28th, 29th, you can see registration information about that on my blog, caseydurango.com. There is the cruise in March, which we have some goodies I need to post up for a group. So if you book through um, Lisa Pennert at Coastline Travel and make sure we get the group thing, we get some more goodies, that's March. And um, a meet Greensboro Meetup, the 10th of September in Greensboro. That's just something I go to Wine Styles at Friendly Center. And if anybody shows up, we talk about keto. So there's that. Um, thank you. I want to give a shout out to patrons. Uh, Patreon.com slash Go Keto with Casey. Quick, uh, a quick little info about that. For monthly pledges of $2, you get, uh, I think I've done 220 morning snippets. We call them video snippets. And then pledge level goes all the way up from the next level. You get um, live, patron-only live streams. Then patron-only group video chats, which I'm having one at noon. And uh, then monthly one-on-ones, depending on what it is. So... Patreon.com slash Coquita with Casey helps me continue what I'm doing. I will always provide free content because I believe to whom much is given, much is expected. And I want to reach as many people as possible. But uh, patrons make it possible and we get a lot of... Oh, and there's a patron-only forum, a very safe place to post. No snark. Oh, Robin, I've lost 125 pounds on keto and have 50 more to go. Congratulations. And Cindy writes, can't wait to meet you on the 22nd. I'm, I'm pretty excited. You should come to beautiful British Columbia. I would love to go to British Columbia. My husband and I last year were in Victoria, a gorgeous city. Um, just gorgeous. That would be great. Here's the thing. There's a speakers tab at my blog. If you have an organization that you think would benefit from a talk from somebody like me, go to it. You know, I... I Get me there 
and we'll, we'll go from there. I'm happy to do it. Have luggage, we'll travel. Oh, speaking of that, I'll be in Texas. Last week of November, first couple of weeks of December, three separate times I'll be going back and forth between Houston, Dallas, and San Antonio talking to a private group. Okay, uh, Stacy, uh, you must have just joined or your volume was turned down. Do I take any supplements? Well, I guess you're asking me specifically. No. Occasionally I take a multivitamin. Nope. And Angie, you must be new. Do I track the M word? Nope. Never have. It's not part of the protocol. You know, if you like that structure, cool. But then you start getting tied up into the number of calories. I don't know how many calories I consume a day. Um, don't let an app tell you what or how much to eat. Listen to your body. That's the key thing about this. It is so basic. Listen to your body. Our bodies talk to us all the time. You know, talking about this, you know, this end stage stuff that takes 20 years, by the time you've gotten to the point where you're a type 2 diabetic, your body's been talking to you. We've been, you know, la, 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 not listening. But our bodies talk to us. Excuse me, I do have to keep an eye on the clock. Do I take salt daily? Um, I, I do. Um, I up my sodium because I found it wasn't immediate, but in a, after about three years of doing this, and keep in mind things change, our bodies change, the situation changes, our weight changes, our age changes. I found that I needed more sodium because the ketogenic diet tends to flush water pretty, pretty consistently out through your kidneys. And as the water goes, so goes sodium. As sodium goes, so go the other electrolytes. The quickest and easiest way to balance things back out if you do not have sodium sensitive hypertension is to get about five grams of sodium a day. Look at your source of sodium. It can be Himalayan pink salt. It can be gray salt. We use kosher salt. It can be Hawaiian red salt. Look at your sodium. Count on that you're already probably getting one and a half or two grams of sodium a day through your food and then just balance that out. But listen to your body. Oh, Kim Sink writes, happy to hear you're on Greensboro. I'm in Clemens. Come on over for the meetup. Come on over. If you have high pressure, blood pressure, should you watch your sodium intake? Yes, absolutely. If you, if you have sodium-sensitive hypertension, watch your sodium. And, you know, we are responsible for our own health care. You know, don't take advice from some white-haired talking head on Facebook. Um, Okay, excuse me, I'm like, do you use keto strips and check? Okay, thank you for that question. I, my producer is passing a question along to me. Um, be responsible for your own health care. If something doesn't seem right to you, if something doesn't feel right, if it just doesn't make sense, or if you don't feel well, listen to your body. Okay? Um, I do occasionally check my ketones. If my weight has done something unexpected, up or down, if I'm not feeling 100% for some reason, um, I will check my glucose and my ketones. I usually use um, the blood testing strips. I recommend the Keto Mojo. Um, I just like it better for years. I use the Precision Extra, but the strips were prohibitively expensive. If you go to my blog, it is a tacky affiliate link, but you'll get 15% off if you buy a kit using the link over on the sidebar of my blog, and I get a little referral thing. But I use those. We've got the urine strips around. I, I just forget to use them. I'm really, I've never really been out of ketosis for this whole time that I know of. Um, they were very motivating to me in the beginning, the urine strips. Very motivating. Um, because I loved just seeing the pink. And they, contrary to what you will hear a lot, they do not become ineffective after time. For some people, sometimes the acetoacetate that is produced from burning ketones for fuel will not be picked up on the reagent strips, which is what the urine strips are. But I've been in ketosis for four and a half years. 
and they still work for me. Yes, my lovely mate is helping us. He is my producer. He took time. He'd been felling trees, and he came in to help me. Okay, good friend of mine has seen results, is now trying keto, has seen your results. That's fantastic. This is what happens. You don't know who you impact. Seriously. So keep doing what you're doing. Um, Okie dokie. Mr. Producer, I think I just answered that one. You had no question? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Okay, could you please tell us what you eat on an average day? Breakfast, lunch, dinner. First of all, I'll tell you, um, I don't eat breakfast, lunch, dinner. It's very rare when I would consume. And I actually kind of stopped even calling them by meals. Because that's so defining. Um, yesterday, I eat very little. I wasn't hungry. So I had maybe two tablespoons of homemade chicken salad. And this is going to sound weird. A couple of palmfuls of woodpecker food we'd gotten from Amazon, but that's a whole other story. Yeah, I blame that on my husband. Um, today, I've already eaten four breakfast links, two scrambled eggs, and half an avocado with two cups of coffee with heavy cream, measured. I may eat again today. I don't know. We're going to be doing some more yard work, and so I might work up more of an appetite. Keep in mind, if you exercise more, you probably need more fuel so your appetite might increase, and there's nothing wrong with that. Follow your actual hunger. Um, and if, so if we, I don't know what we do, it depends on, sometimes, you know, we get a wild hair and we go out and go to our favorite Mexican restaurant, we pass on tortilla chips and I get a plate of seafood with sauce on the side, cheese sauce on the side, and some sauteed vegetables, it really just depends. To me, this is not a restrictive way of eating. To me, the other way was restrictive, because you're always concentrating on what you couldn't eat. Keeping your calories limited. I have no idea. No idea about my calories. I can tell you there are probably some days I eat more food than I need. I mean, that I actually need. I could probably push the peckishness further. And that's something we say around Patreon. Push the peckishness. A little bit empty. I kind of like that little bit of empty feeling. A little light. I've gotten used to it. I like it. And I think I function better on it. What am I drinking? Uh, I don't know if that was a, is a new question. I'll say it again. Diet tonic water, a splash, a splash of diet cranberry, and a squeeze of lime. My ketones go between 0.3 and 0.9, and, and you have lost weight or you have not lost weight? You know, the blood, and in, in measuring, you're not measuring ketones. I mean, it's easier to say that, but with the blood, you're actually measuring beta-hydroxybutyrate. With the urine, you're measuring acetoacetate. And with breath analyzers, which I don't use, and not but only during a couple of small trials, um, clinical trials, have I used any breath anal analyzers, that is measuring acetone. But anyway, 0.3 to 0.9, if you're over 0.5, I would say, great. If you are losing weight, keep doing what you're doing, if you feel good. All right, guys, I am going to start to wind down. Thank you for letting me be part of your Saturday. And um, thank you to patrons. It really does make a difference. I would love to hear if you feel like the camera quality was improved from usual. And uh, I'm glad I didn't break the internet when I gave the slideshow. So I'm learning bit by bit. Technology is always something new. Uh, any other questions or comments before, before we say goodbye to each other? And the, when I'm looking at this, the, um, the the comments keep jumping up and back. So I'm going to find your page. Yay, thank you. So just to let you know, my blog is caseydurango.com. You can see events coming up there. And I haven't. I need to write more. <laughs> I need to write more um, for that. So that's where you can register for the Portland Road Show for the cruise. Um, see some other information. You can get the link for the Keto Mojo. 
my YouTube channel is Go Keto with Casey, and but closest to my heart is patreon.com slash go keto with Casey, where as I say, patrons don't pay a monthly fee so much to get access to me, but rather to get access to each other. It is a true community. Okay. I hope it does help. And <laughs> hey Dory, honey lamb, missed you. You need to pop in back in. Keto helps the memory. Granddaughter and I went shopping at the mall. She took us back to the car, but it wasn't there. Guess who remembered where it really was? Yay, Grandma! It. I'll tell you what, I got my brain back. Seriously, of course, literally, my brain was always there. But it was... It, uh, um, I, I'm smarter. I got my brains back. My son got stationed in North Carolina, so I may get to a good excuse to come see you. That would be great. Try to come the second Monday of a month and come to Greensboro and come to Wine Styles. It's half price wine by the glass on Mondays. And um, it's very informally. I, I don't take emails or sell anything. And you don't have to speak if you don't want to. It's just a little support meeting. Really made up. All right. I will be seeing some of you, I believe, uh, for our video group chat on Patreon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Eat fatty sources of protein. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. But mostly be kind to yourself. Treat yourself at least as well as you treat those around you, which I hope is really well. Okay. TTFN.